Okay, so in our case, we don't have to remove the old points uh, because they're already gone, because we're refitting the electronic ignition. Um, removing the old points is pretty straightforward and it does explain it, how to do it in the instructions. Okay, so the first thing we've done, the first thing I've done is to rotate the engine round so that where the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke on number one cylinder, which is this cylinder on the timing side. I know it's compression stroke because we've got the, we deliberately left off the, the um, rocker box covers so we can watch the valves going up and down. And basically we turn it until the inlet valve goes down. And that means the piston is going to the bottom. It's sucking fuel in. Then we keep turning it and the piston will start coming up and the inlet valve will close. And so we know we're on the compression stroke. So then we take, we keep rotating it. And yeah, there you can just probably see down there, that's the top of the piston. So we keep rotating the engine forward until we're at top dead center on the compression stroke and that the uh, both tappets are loose, the inlet and the exhaust. So that would be where at the moment that the engine would fire. But obviously we, um, the uh, ignition fires before top of the tenter. So now we have to rotate the engine backwards to the uh, fully advanced position. Now this is where, and this is like about the first step in the manual and where it gets uh, in the instructions and where it gets a little vague because it says insert the plunger into the hole in the front of the engine. Now, and there's no diagram. So people are going, what? So, the plunger is a special tool, this one. Excuse the hand handheld camera, but it's just easier because I'm moving around different parts of the bike. And here on the front of the engine is the plunger blanking screw, because that's all that is. That's just a blanking screw that enables us to fit the plunger when we want to, and we want to do that now. And what this plunger does is we just screw it in there, and then, Believe it or not, there is a drilling in the crankshaft. And when the crankshaft aligns up with this pin, which is exactly uh, top dead center. Then that pin will go fully home, slot in the hole, and we know we're at exactly the right place. And at the same time, the uh, ignition timing line, the correct one we're gonna be using, will also magically appear <clears throat> in exactly the right position there. So we'll try doing that now. So when it says remove the, the blanking plug from the front of the engine <clears throat> and fit the plunger, that's what it means. So there is actually a hole drilled in the crankshaft and we need to find that hole. So I've put the bike in gear. I've put my glove down somewhere and immediately lost it. But I'm just about to turn the back wheel round backwards to turn the engine backwards so that we can get to the uh, uh, the correct position on the engine so what I'm doing is I'm going to turn the engine backwards and what we should see is the timing mark appear here Okay, as the engine goes backwards, there, can we see, it? Just I can just see it appearing now. There you go. And I'm gonna get it round to just about, what I think is just about dead on. Okay, and now and I'm gonna put some light pressure on the plunger. Can you see that? that that's now locked in. Right, that plunger has now gone in to that little aperture in the uh, crankshaft. The engine is now locked. Okay, so you don't really need that plunger. It's just that plunger will get you absolutely exactly in the right place. Now the plunger is located in that hole. You've got the timing mark uh, and 
I'm sure Al says be on it. Well, I know it'll say be on it because obviously only the very early engines use the A timing mark. But anyway, that's the correct timing mark, the one that appears. So we know that that is now the timing mark for number one cylinder on this side. So the engine is now set at fully advanced ignition, which is where we want it to, to fit the uh, ignition. Okay, uh, now we've got the engine set in the right place, we're going to start fitting the ignition. So the first thing we're going to do is fit the rotor. Now the rotor is simply fitted so that this edge of the blade that sticks out, this right hand edge, is between 9 and 11 meters away from the edge of this part of the casing. So it's just literally going to sit in there and then I'm going to measure with my tape measure quite simply to try and get that that edge between 9 and 11, 11 millimeters away from the edge of the casing there where this uh, where, where the sort of bulge is, simple as that. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm just going to measure that, get it in the right place, and then I'm going to put the uh, little uh, Allen screw that is supplied, I'm going to put the Allen screw in, okay, which screws into the end of the uh, exhaust uh, cam camshaft, hopefully. <laughs> right. And when I've got that in the right position, then I'm just simply going to tighten that up when it's 9 to 11 mil away from there. Okay, so I've fitted <clears throat> that rotor and I've measured a 10 mil gap as near as I can between those, those two edges. And then I've tightened up the, uh, tightened up the rotor using the uh, Allen screw. So it's all nice and tight. And it's measured, I've got it on 10, I've tried to get it on 10 mil. The thing is, you need to get it as near as you can, but it doesn't matter if it's not exact, because there is adjustment on the, uh, the, the, the plate, the sensor plate that goes on is slotted so that we can turn it later to get the exact timing. As long as that's roughly 10 mil, you're okay. Obviously, if it's way out, then there's not enough movement on the sensor plate to you know to make the adjustment but as long as it's near enough then you should be fine to make the final adjustment later on when we put the strobe on do we put the strobe on when the engine started to get the timing exact but as long as it's near enough now we're okay 